Member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr. Temporary Speaker. And I rise to speak on the Fire and Emergency Services Levy Bill 2017. And I commend the tra Shadow Treasurer on his common sense and reasonable amendments to this bill. And I must say, Mr. Acting Speaker, I get a bit nervous when big insurance companies start praising legislation. It usually means that once again the government's increasing profits of big corporations at the expense of the people of New South Wales. And that is why Labor has proposed several amendments to this bill. The emergency services levy direct funds to the SES, the State Emergency Service, the Rural New South Wales Fire Service and Fire and Rescue New South Wales. These are all essential services and we must ensure that they are equally, equitably and adequately funded to do their important jobs. When Maitland was hit by devastating floods in recent years, volunteers from these services were the ones who answered the call and rescued people from floodwaters. Indeed, the SES was formed after the devastating 1955 floods in Maitland. And as such, its continued ability and viability to provide those services is very dear to the people of my electorate. The emergency services levy is currently paid by New South Wales individuals and businesses who purchase home contents insurance and building insurance. This increases the cost of that insurance and makes it harder to attain for low income earners in our state. But as the Shadow Treasurer outlined, the average savings spruced by the government and the Treasurer are misleading. Those who do, do not pay for home contents insurance currently will be subject to the new levy. And this means those with the least means will be subject to further financial pressure from the government. The government must address this issue. How will they ensure that the transition from our current system to this new one, this new levy, will not abandon those in our community who can least afford it? Farmers, for example, across New South Wales are very concerned about this new reform. Previously, they had no need to pay for uh, insurance and building insurance on farmland with no buildings. And the real impact of the introduction of this levy on farmers is unknown, especially where the farmer's home is on a, a separate parcel of land. The government has refused, yet again, like they do with so much of their legislation that they bring to this pay, place, to hand over the modelling and the information. And they've left it till this la very last minute to introduce this bill before 1 July 2017. It's another example of where this government introduces legislation without letting the whole community know the costs and not knowing whether it will actually leave farmers worse off. This is another example of government abandoning regional New South Wales in favour of corporations who inhabit the CBD of Sydney. And I will continue with my colleagues to hold the nationals to account for the countless occasions where they have abandoned their constituents. Farmers are meant to be represented by the National Party of New South Wales, but once again they've proved that they don't have the gall to stand up to the corporate sycophants of the Liberal Party. Labor's committed to regional and rural New South Wales and will always stick up for our farmers against the Sydney-obsessed coalition government. If the Nationals fail to stick up for their constituents, like they did with the Greyhounds, like they did with the commercial fishers, like they did with the Tweed Valley Women's Service, Labor will be there. I have some further concerns about the transition from the current system to the new levy. If someone purchases or renews their insurance policies up until the end of this financial year, they will then be paying for the new levy very shortly afterwards. So if Mrs Jones renews her insurance in June for the 2016-17 financial year and then receives her rates notice not long afterwards for the 2017-2018 financial year, her household budget will be put under significant strain. How can this not be double dipping? The government's being very tricky about this legislation. They talk about graduating people from the old system to the new one. There's no graduation for Mrs Jones. All she gets is two big bills thanks to this government. And how is the Treasurer going to help the people of New South Wales in this transition? The public in this state are so sick to death of being accused of being bludgers and leaners because they protest against this government's big business agenda. The less well off among us do not to be deserve to be stung twice as a result of this transition. And if the Premier's big insurance company mates are not providing assistance to these people, then the government must act. This government is too weak need to stand up to the insurance companies in this state, and Labor is not. We have seen time and again big business promise to pass on the benefits of government reform, and then consumers realise later it was all just talk. 
Labor's proposed amendments to this bill are very common sense, very reasonable additions, which will mean reduced premiums for consumers. By extending the term of the insurance monitor, consumers will be guaranteed savings from this reform. If the insurance monitor's monitoring period is allowed to end on 31 December in 2018, consumers are not guaranteed the benefit of this change. And that's why I urge the government to be um, confirming the amendments of the Shadow Treasurer. This would be only 18 months after the proposed reforms would be implemented. So as a result, consumers might find that their insurance premiums are increased arbitrarily in 2019. And this is why Labor proposes extending the monitoring period to July 2022 to introduce a real uh, transition period. And this would allow that insurance monitor to prevent the corporate mates of the Premier and the Treasurer from taking the benefits of this return and jacking up premiums to increase their profits. The second aspect of Labor's amendments in relation to the insurance monitor um, is our proposal to extend the monitoring period back to the 2012-2013 financial year. If insurance companies overcollect from consumers, they are entitled. Um, the, the consumers are entitled to be refunded what was not passed on to the emergency services. There is no room for super profits for insurers here. The bill proposed by the government only allows the monitoring to be into the overcollection from the 2015-16 year and the 2016-17 financial years. At, whereas Labor's amendment would allow the monitor to investigate overcollection from the 2012-13 year, the 2013-14 year and the 2014-15 year. This government is happy to leave the insurance companies to be in control of distributing their over-collected funds. This is another example of this government responding to the insurance company's Christmas wish list. First, we saw it with workers' compensation, and time after time, insurance companies in this state write the, government, the policy and this Liberal National Government implements it. Labor's amendments would ensure that the consumers who paid more than what was paid, passed on to emergency services would be refunded their overpayment from 2012 onwards. And if you think about it, Mr Acting Speaker, when you got that little cheque back from an insurer a couple of months ago and it was a small, tiny amount, the concern that, that people in this state rightly have is how much has been held back from all the previous years. The other amendments proposed by Labor ensure that major government entities are contributing their fair share of this new levy. Our proposed amendments that subject West Connects to the levy are critical. As the Shadow Treasurer has said, and as the um, Shadow Transport Minister just said here in this place a minute ago, if West Connect can sponsor a footy team, it can pay the levy to pay for emergency services. Another one of our um, common sense amendments from this side makes sure that the lessees of the Sydney, Bankstown and Camden airports also contribute to the funding of emergency services in New South Wales. Though they can't be subjected to this levy at the moment as they occupy Commonwealth land, they should still make payments in support of our emergency services. The Sydney Airport Corporation is hardly struggling to make a buck, and they should contribute to New South Wales emergency services, requiring the minister to report back to the parliament on the progress of negotiations with the airport lessee companies is another reasonable amendment which will make sure that this reform is an equitable one, but most importantly that the Treasurer and this government are held to account to deliver what they actually promised. It's not one of those moments, Mr Acting Speaker, where they can just wiggle out of it. The government is talking, the Premier is talking all the time about housing affordability as the number one issue that they are trying to address. However, when we see them engaging in a double dip by insurers, failing to monitor and ensure that overpayments of previous years are repaid to consumers, we see that their talk is just that. Talk. And, Mr Speaker, talk is very cheap. The government needs to act to ensure that those who are lucky enough to own a home in this state are not being charged once by insurers and once by local government councils. We need to ensure that overpayments are repaid and that large corporations pay their share. I urge the government to adopt the reasonable, common sense amendments of Labor's opposition. Prove for once you are the wor really working for the betterment of the people in this state, not just for the self-interest of big corporations. Thank you, Mr Temporary Speaker.